Good afternoon, everybody. Thank you for coming along. Uh, subject, as you can see, is the kingdom of God. So now, when we look around the world nowadays, there is no good news, and it's very worrying. I will start with some grim hard facts about the state of the world now, but I promise you things will get much better later. Let's see at the state of the world in war and conflict. At the moment, well, since the, the World War II, there's been 250 major wars in the world, with 23 million people have been killed. And now there is 34, 35 major conflicts going on in the world. And it's 5,000 nuclear weapons or an air trigger alert. Social justice. There's 35% of the world people live in countries in which basic political rights and civil liberties are denied. One billion people, a third of the world's labor force, is unemployed or underemployed. And 27 million people are enslaved around the world. There are over 45 million refugees and internally displaced people in the world. Poverty. Poverty. There is three billion of, of the world's people, one half, live in poverty, living in less than two pounds per day. 1.3 billion people live in absolute or extreme poverty, living on less than one pound per, per day. 800 million people lack access to basic health care. 17 million people, including 11 million children, die every year from easily preventable diseases and malnutrition. 2.4 billion people lack access to proper sanitation. And 1.1 billion do not have safe drinking water. Environment. Half of the forests that originally cover 46% of the Earth's land surface are gone. 60% of the world's coral reefs, which contain up to one quarter of all marine species, could be lost in the next 30 years. And global warming is expected to increase the Earth temperature by three degrees in the next 100 years. Religion in the UK and in Europe. As when they had last attended a place of worship and religion, for religion reasons, more people in England and Wales, 63%, had not attended past year. 43% of the people last attended over a year ago. 20% of the people have never attended. Only 9% of the people reporting having attended a place of worship within the last week. And according to the UK census, between 2001 and 2011, the number of Christian born in, in, in Britain fell by 5.3 million, which is 10,000 a week. And with a continued rate of decline at this level, the number of UK born Christian will be reduced to zero by 2067. Nearly three quarters of young British identify as having no religion. Research asked the religious view of people between 16 to 29 across Europe, and they found young people in the Czech Republic are, are the least religious, with 91% at the age group saying they have no faith at all, and the UK is 70%. So what is the answer? To find the answer, we must go back to, to creation. In Genesis chapter 1 and verse 27 to 31, we read, So God created mankind in his own image. and the image of God, he created them, male and female, he created them. God blessed them and said to them, Be fruitful and increase in number. Fill the earth and subdue it. Rule over the fish and in the sea and the birds in the sky and over every living creature that moves on the ground. 
Then God said, I give you every seed seed bearing plant on the face of the whole earth and every tree that has fruit with seed in it. They will be yours for food. And to all the beasts of the earth and all the birds in the sky and all the creatures that move along the ground, everything that has the breath of life in it, I give every green plant for food. And it was so. God saw that all he had made and it was very good. And there was evening and there was morning and the sixth day. So the earth was perfect until when Adam took of the fruit of the tree of the knowledge and evil. It is true chronologically, Eve seen before Adam. She was tempted, pick of the fruit of the tree of the knowledge of good and evil and ate it. After that, she gave the fruit to her husband and he ate, which you can find that in Genesis chapter three and verse one, but we're not going to tell that now. Yet the blame is put in Adam as the responsible for all mankind. In Romans chapter five, we read in verse 12, Jews, therefore Jews has sin enter into the world through one man and death through sin. In this way, death came to all people because all sin. In verse 14, nevertheless, death reigned from the time of Adam to the time of Moses, even over those who did not sin by breaking a command, as did Adam, who is a pattern of the one to come. Verse 15, but the gift is not the light, like the trespass. For if the many died by the trespass of the one man, how much more did God's grace and the gift that came by the grace of the one man, Jesus Christ, overflow to the many. Verse 17, for if by the trespass of the one man, death reigneth through one man, how much more will those who received God's abundant provision of grace and of the gift of righteousness reign in the life through the one man, Jesus Christ. And verse 19, for Jews are through the disobedience of the one man, the many were made sinners. So also through the obedience of the one man, the many will be made righteous. This one man Paul refers to is Adam, as verse 14 makes clear. A scripture represents that it was Adam, not Eve who sinned against God and brought separation from God and death to all mankind. Adam tried to blame Eve indirectly. We can see that in Genesis chapter three and verse 12, the man said, the woman you put here with me, she gave me some fruit from the tree and I ate it. But Adam is the one recognized as making sin entrance into the world. And there are few reasons why Adam is to blame for this fall of humanity. Adam was created first and his first and his wife was created to be a suitable helper. And we can see that in Genesis chapter two and verse 18. The Lord God said, it is no good for the man to be alone. I will make a helper suitable for him. God held Adam responsible for his family. Also in his conversation with Adam and Eve, God questioned Adam first. In Genesis chapter three and verse nine to 13, but the Lord God called to, to the man, where are you? He answered, I hear you, you in the garden and I was afraid because I was naked, so I hate. And he said, who told you that you were naked? Have you eaten from the tree that I command you not to eat from? The man said, the woman you put here with me, she gave me some fruit from the tree and I ate it. Then the Lord God said to the woman, what is this you have done? The woman said, the serpent deceived me and I ate. Even though Eve sinned before Adam, Adam as the head of the family was held responsible for what happened in his family. Also the original command to not eat of the tree of the knowledge of good and evil was given to Adam before Eve was created. In Genesis chapter two and verse 17, we read, but you must not eat from the tree of the knowledge of good and evil for when you eat from it, you will certainly die. Eve knew of the restriction in chapter three and verse two and three. The woman said to the serpent, 
we made it from the trees of the trees in the garden. But God that did say, you must not eat from 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 the fruit from the tree as it's in the middle of the garden, and you must not touch it or you will die. Adam had obviously had obviously told her, but it was Adam who hear straight from God. In First Timothy chapter two and verse fourteen. And Adam was not the one deceived, it was the woman who was deceived and became a sinner. Paul makes a slight distinction between the sin of Adam from the sin of Eve. Adam was not the one deceived, it was the woman who was deceived and became a sinner. Eve sinned because of a trick. However, Adam was not deceived, which means he chose to sin. When Adam took out the fruit from his wife, he knew full well what he was doing. He was not misled, or he simply decided to fight against God's command. He chose to listen to his wife instead of to God. And the New Testament teaches that as the first man Adam represented all mankind, he was the head of the human race. And everyone died because we all belong to Adam. The suffering and death that resulted from Adam's sins underlined our need for a savior. The, script, the scriptures refers to as the last Adam in 1 Corinthians chapter 15 and verse 45. So it is written, the first man Adam became a living being, the last Adam, a life-given spirit. That title for Christ and the many comparison of Adam to Christ will make no sense if original sin had come through Eve. Although Eve was the first to sin, the solution to sin came through a seed. The seed, Jesus Christ, was born of a virgin named Mary. He paid the price for sin and will, stop and will save those who receive the salvation. In John chapter 3 and verse 16, for God so loved the world that he gave his only Son, that whoever believes in him shall not perish, but have eternal life. Through Adam, we receive a curse, but through Jesus, we receive a blessing. So we must believe in Jesus Christ as our savior. Jesus came to the world that we might have life through him. So what is the kingdom of God? The Bible answers the question. God gave King Nebuchadnezzar a dream of an image of a man with a head of gold, chest and arm of silver, belly and thighs of bronze, legs of iron and feet partly iron and partly of clay. God saw the meaning of the dream through Daniel, showing that there will be a four world ruling empires. And you can read this in Daniel chapter two, verse 31 to 43. But history, has shown the empire to be. The gold is the Babylonian, the silver, the Medo-Persian, the bronze, the Greco-Macedonian, and the iron, Roman. And the finishing the explanation, Daniel wrote in chapter two and verse 44. In the time of, this, of those kings, the God of heaven will set up a kingdom that will never be destroyed nor will be left to another people. He will cruise all these kingdoms and bring them to an end, but he will himself endure forever. The kingdom of God is a real government that will replace the government of this earth. The kingdom of God will be established on earth when Jesus returns. And we can see that in Revelation chapter 11, verse 15. The seven angels sounded his trumpet, and there were loud voices in heaven which said, the kingdom of the world have become the kingdom of the Lord and his Messiah, and it will reign forever and ever. And we must prepare now for the kingdom by living according to the rule of the kingdom now. Jesus told Nicodemus, a person must be born again in John chapter three and verse one to eight. Now there was a Pharisee man named Nicodemus who was a member of the Jewish ruling council. He came to Jesus and I and said, Rabbi, we know that you are a teacher who has come from God, for no one could perform these signs you are doing if you go where no with him. Jesus replied, 
Very truly, I tell you, no one can see the kingdom of God unless they are born again. How can someone, someone be born where they are old? Nicodemus asked. Surely they cannot enter a second time into the mother's womb to be born. Jesus answered, very truly, I tell you, no one can enter the kingdom of God unless they're born of water and spirit. Flesh give birth to flesh, but the spirit give birth to spirit. You should not be surprised at my saying, you must be born again. The winds blow wherever they please. You hear his sound, but you cannot tell where it comes from or where it's going. So it is with everyone born of the spirit. And to begin this, we must be baptized, which signifies the death of the whole sinful man and the beginning of a new life dedicated to Christ. In Romans chapter 6 and verse 1 to 4, we read, What shall we say then? So we go and sinning, so that grace may increase. By no means. We are those who have died to sin. How can we live in it any longer? Or oh, don't you know that all of us who were baptized into Christ Jesus were baptized into his death? We were therefore buried with him through baptism into this death, in order that just as Christ was raised from the dead, through the glory of the Father, we do my live a new life. So the kingdom on earth, the Old Testament prophets, under the inspiration of the Holy Spirit, wrote about the kingdom of God being established on the earth. We can read that in Second Peter chapter 1 and verse 20 to 21. Above all, you must understand that no prophecy of scripture came about by the prophets on the interpretation of things. For prophecy never had its origin in the human will, but prophets, through human, spoke from God as they were carried along by the Holy Spirit. Jesus Christ will then reign as a king of kings and lords of lords, as he says in Revelation chapter 19 and verse 16. What will be the kingdom of God like? Let's see in Isaiah chapter 2 and verse 2 to 4. In the last days, the mountain of the Lord's temple will be established as the highest of the mountains. It will be exalted above the hills and all nations will stream to it. Many people will come and say, come, let, let's go up to the mountain of the Lord, to the temple of the God of Jacob. He will teach us his ways so that we may walk in his paths. The Lord will go out from Zion, the word of the Lord from Jerusalem. He will judge between the nations and he will set the dispute for many people. They will beat the sword into plowshares and the spears into pruning hooks. Nation will not take up sword against nation, nor will they train for war anymore. This prophecy is also repeated in Micah chapter 4, verse 1 and 3. It describes a time when God's law will be the way that all people will follow. People will want to learn God's way because they will see the many benefits of doing so. And in the ground will grow everything, as we see in Isaiah chapter 35, verse 1 to 2. The desert and the parched land will be glad. The wilderness will rejoice and blossom like the crocus. It will burst into bloom. It will rejoice greatly, greatly and shout for joy. The glory of Lebanon will be given to it. The splendor of Carmel and Sharon, they will see the glory of the Lord, the splendor of our God. And the world will be at peace. Human sicknesses and diseases will be healed. And it says, verses five to six, then will the eyes of the blind will be open and the ears of the deaf unstopped. Then will the lame leap like a deer and the mute tongue shout for joy. Water will go forth in the wilderness and streams in the desert. So how to enter into the kingdom? Believing and following Jesus' teachings about how to live as the way to eternal life. In John chapter 3, verse 15 and 16, we read that everyone who believes may have eternal life in him. For God so loved the world that he gave his only son, so that whoever believes in him shall not perish but have eternal life. For God did not send his son into the world to condemn the world, 
but to save the world through him. And in Matthew chapter 19 and verse 17, why did you ask me about what is good? Jesus replied, there is only one good, one who is good. If you want to enter life, keep the commandments. Understanding this point is very important in terms of entering the, queen, the kingdom of God, because flesh and blood cannot inherit the kingdom of God. Even though Jesus will establish the kingdom of God on earth and rule over physical human beings, only those who have been changed will be able to inherit his kingdom. And finally, seek the first, the kingdom of God. In Matthew chapter 6, in verse 33, we seek first the kingdom and kingdom and his righteousness, and all these things will be given to you as well. So now that you know what the kingdom of God is, you need to understand how to follow Jesus' command to look for the kingdom of God and get baptized in the name of the Lord Jesus. Your task is to learn, your task is to learn what God's law are and then to begin living in accordance with the rules of his kingdom. Thank you.